When the founders decided to form a more perfect union, they had an ideal in mind that even they were unwilling or unable to achieve, a blueprint for a democracy that gave certain inalienable rights to all. And we've been striving to achieve that ideal since then. I like to think of democracy as a house that we're all working to build together. A house that needs to provide safety and shelter to everyone. The blueprint indicates it is designed to do that, but we have fallen short time and time again. People of color, the differently abled, the young and the old, the newly immigrated, those born here as dreamers, individuals of one gender, or those who identify with different genders than they were born with, or even no gender, those who love someone of their same gender, those who practice their own faith or no faith. The ideal of democracy is to provide equal protection for all. And lately we look at our home and we begin to see that even our land, our air, our water, all of these deserve protection too. The ideal contained in the blueprint says that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness should be afforded all and that the leaders of this country should be accountable to the people, all of whom should be assured the right to vote, and that the government should be free of corruption and serve the people, a government of, by, and for the people. When I think of democracy as a house, it has to be a big house to encompass all of that, and has to belong to all of us, and that ideal is perhaps even more threatened now than it has ever been when those in power seek to serve themselves through greed and corruption, to limit access to voting, to criminal justice, to marriage, to citizenship, to all of the freedoms we should all enjoy, then they are battering away at the walls we've already put in place. When citizens are not engaged and informed, they fall easy prey to lies and manipulation by those who would seek to serve their own interests. And if this goes on, the house, the ideal, the democracy will fall. The walls, the roof, the very structure of this ideal of democracy, this great house we are building is the law. Some of these ideals, these laws are already built, but the laws must be enforced against the battering of those who serve greed, corruption, dominance, prejudice, exclusion, and even promote insurrection to stay in power. When it comes to the law, everyone needs a good attorney. In the state of Colorado, we have a people's attorney in Phil Weiser. As the son and grandson of Holocaust survivors, he brings a view of democracy and equality that can help us as we work for the ideal. As a defender of democracy, he serves to protect our greatest treasures, our children, our homes, our rights, our freedoms, for all of us, while we citizens continue to build the dream and make it real at last. presents our second in the Defenders of Democracy series, Follow the Law, Equality, Justice, Freedom. Featuring Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser. With special guest, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro. Starring tonight, Colorado's own singer-songwriter, Andy Hackbart. Plus, spoken word artist, Kaya Cockrell. Theater from Roxy's Downtown. And, as always, fun films by the Rocks production players. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Defenders of Democracy. Good evening, everyone.
everyone. We're excited to see you all here and to feature our own Defender of Democracy here in Colorado, Attorney General Phil Weiser, and his special guest, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro. We have some wonderful talent for you, exciting videos and more. But before we get to all this, I just have a couple of items to talk with you about. First, we'll be doing a question and answer session with AG Weiser later on in the show. So please, if you have a question for him, type it into the Q&A window. If you'll go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see a row of symbols in the middle and you can open both the chat and the Q&A windows by clicking on those. Just remember, questions go in the Q&A. Also, feel free to send comments to everyone in the chat. Our team members will be on the chat to talk with you. Second, let me tell you how to be a defender of democracy yourself. When you see one of our animated character videos come up, there will be a little QR code in the corner of your screen. Just aim your smartphone camera at that code and a link will come up. Tap the link and it will take you to an Act Blue page where you can chip in whatever you can to help reelect Bill Weiser, Attorney General. Now, let's get right on with the show. Let me introduce you to our house musician, Andy Hackbar. Hello, Andy. Well, hello, Sandy. How are you? I'm good. It's so good to have you here. You have a tune for us to rock us out, right? I do. I'm honored to be here. This is a song called Tonight I Am a Gold Mine. It's about uh, you know, just ignoring the haters and doing what you feel is right. Attorney General Weiser, you know what I'm talking about. Hope you guys enjoy. never comes when I whistle and love's been the flower of the thistle I bury the man I am now for only what I have been what I know I could be oh but their truth of me how it permeates their whiskey lips then disintegrates all one can see of a man the streets on these boots the dirt of the wind in my teeth and oh I can already see the way that they look at me when they know I can picture the sunrise 
from a hill on the high side Overlooking the shadows below numbers are in. In the 2020 general election, Colorado voters turned out in record numbers. 78% of eligible voters cast their votes, and Colorado ranked in the top five states in the nation in voter turnout. And yet, we on Forward wonder, do Colorado voters really know who represents them in our state? And further, do they know anything about the beliefs and policies of our elected officials? We set out to answer this question by conducting a very unscientific, but we think interesting survey. A survey of one random person. Please watch. Excuse me. We're with Channel 8's new show, Forward. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Well, I guess that'd be okay. Did you vote in the 2020 election? Yes. Do you know who Phil Weiser is? He's Colorado's Attorney General. Do you know anything about him? Whoa, there is so much to know, but yes, Phil Weiser advocates for several issues that are extremely important to me, such as uh, protection for consumers, criminal justice, economic fairness, equal justice for all, gun safety, and women's rights. Like me, Phil Weiser believes that the American dream is slipping away from many citizens. He knows that we can and must do better to protect Colorado values and to provide opportunities for all. As Benjamin Franklin once said, you have a republic as long as you can keep it. That sums up one of my core beliefs and I think one of Phil Weiser's as well. Wow, our questions are answered. Does this segment not make you proud to be a Coloradan? Coming up on Forward, a Colorado ski area goes virtual. Please stay tuned. And now, please welcome Colorado Attorney General, Phil Weiser. I am thrilled to be with you all. Uh, Andy, that was wonderful. And all of you, uh, in Rock's Productions, you do amazing work. Truly, truly special. I'm thrilled to be virtually with my Douglas County friends. And I have to say, I know one of your uh, core team members is Michael Hayes, who is married to the wonderful Gazala, who also have been with me on this journey. Uh, and I remember when Michael invi invited me to come speak to a group that I don't think knew who I was but you all welcomed me. And I felt welcomed by all of you from the very beginning. And part of what we need at this moment is engaged citizens, because what Ben Franklin said holds true. We have a republic as long as we can keep it. And what does that mean to keep a republic? It means we need citizens to understand what's at stake. We just got through an election like none other, and we'll have Josh Shapiro with us later, who is on the front lines working in Pennsylvania at a time when it wasn't clear what would happen. And it was actually the Saturday of my son's bar mitzvah when we heard the final word, Pennsylvania went for President Biden. And we had a, I can't say final result in the election, but at least a monumental moment. And then we had to fight to keep that moment, which we did to protect our democracy, to protect the rule of law. All of you are part of the team that will continue to fight for our democracy and the rule of law. 
And as a very knowledgeable constituent said, we need to be in this work together because a lot of people feel like their American dream is slipping away, that they're being preyed on by irresponsible businesses, that their rights, equal rights, are being taken from them, or that a criminal justice system isn't working as well as it could be, and we can improve it in a way that will protect public safety and be fair to people. And as mentioned, to protect gun safety, I know many of us work together with Moms Demand to help develop a red flag law here in Colorado, which has saved lives. We've also got to protect and treasure our Colorado way of life and protecting our land, air, and water. We depend on these natural resources and in time of climate change, that's at risk as well. I can't take anything for granted. We know that in 2010 and 2014, we saw really tough elections here in Colorado for statewide elected Democrats with a Democrat in the White House. That's the reality that we live in. And what we can all do together is be vigilant, to continue to be part of a team that's committed to democracy and a vision of government that Abraham Lincoln put it so well, a government of the people, a government by the people and a government, I wish you could say it with me, for the people. Because as the people's lawyer, I take that charge very seriously. And I need all of you being totally engaged and vigilant, which I know is how Rocks Productions rolls and the commitment that we all have to learn from prior election seasons when we lost, for example, in 2014, Mark Udall as an incumbent U.S. Senator. So we're going to be vigilant. I'm going to work hard. I need you all on my team. Excited to have uh, what is a truly, truly fun event uh, and getting people engaged in ways that we need more of in politics. Politics should be fun. It should be meaningful uh, and appreciate all of you in that spirit. My name is Kaya Cockrell. The title of this piece is Patriotism. To say that I love America means to accept the fundamentally flawed land that was built on the backs of my ancestors and fed with their tears. I don't know if I can say that I love America, but to say that I don't means that I don't belong here. I'd be homeless. Because if America doesn't care for me, why should I praise the cracks of a whip that carved into my back so intentionally? I'd lick my wounds to heal them, but my mouth is dry from the lack of water given to me. I'm not meant to grow here. The soil is only known to be fertilized with bodies and I'm damaged. But don't tell me I don't love America because my skin has loved America before I knew what she meant. I pledged to her every day. And I remember saying it, liberty and justice for all, when they were just words to me. Before I comprehended that people who look like me are apprehended only as often as I was told that I was pretty for a black girl. And that was a lot. I loved America when she lied to me. I loved America before I knew Lady Liberty had hidden shackles on her ankles. And as I progressed, I felt that weight dragging me down. And I loved America when she was drowning. I loved her. Even when deceiving, capricious, and conniving, when living here wasn't really living but surviving. Even when she was misleading and suspicious, I was defending. All while trying to break free, I loved her so much that I got down on one knee during her anthem to propose overdue change and she rejected me neglected my attempt to bring awareness of hateful people causing her divide and i knowing that this has been going on longer than i've been alive i go back to her all the damage it does me to vouch for what we call the land of the free thank you Colorado, but for how long? Your Rocks reporter here with a special report on Phil Weiser, our Colorado Attorney General. He's protesting the BLM. No people, not that BLM. 
Attorney General Weiser is taking it to the Bureau of Land Management, that BLM. He's protecting us from the improperly approved Uncompagre Field Office's Resource Management Plan. The Trump administration improperly finalized and approved the Uncompagre Plan in April 2020. And that plan governs mineral extraction and other land use activities on federal lands spanning five counties in southwestern Colorado. This reporter has learned that the Colorado Department of Natural Resources protested the plan in July 2019 and that significant inconsistencies existed between the BLM plan and Colorado state policies. Phil Weiser has said, in Colorado, our public lands are critical to our quality of life and economy. Over the years, the Bureau of Land Management has taken a series of illegal actions in developing the resource management plan that harms and conflicts with our state's policies. We are bringing this lawsuit to address those harms and safeguard public lands and wildlife in Colorado. Until next time, this is your Rocks Reporter signing off for now. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey, everybody, this is RJ. I use my superpower, racial justice, to support candidates and those serving in office who are defenders of democracy. Colorado's Attorney General Phil Weiser is standing up for the ideals that our democracy was founded on by protecting election integrity, voter rights, criminal justice, consumer rights, environmental protection, and racial justice. Won't you be a defender of democracy and support him too? We want to keep Phil in office and keep fighting for racial justice in Colorado. Phil's our man to do that. Just use your smartphone camera to scan this QR code and tap the link that comes up so you can chip in a few bucks. Or take a picture of the screen so you'll have the web address to type into your browser later. So come on, everyone, and join the Defenders of Democracy. We want all of you on our team. It's sound.
excited to welcome back Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser and his special guest, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro. Real treat for me, and it'll be a treat for all of you. Um, you're gonna get to hear my answers to your questions later, but first, a good friend, mentor, and a outstanding human being, Josh Shapiro. Josh, thanks for joining us here at Rocks Productions, um, a true grassroots engagement about what our democracy is like. Do you still have the RBG in the background there, Josh? <laughs> we put the RBG back up on the shelf uh, in, in our dining room for all to see. But yeah, she was hanging out over my shoulder during the election to keep an eye on things. So we had RBG there, uh, the postal uh, truck there. What's the significance there? Postal truck is there because, um, you know, this was the first election here in Pennsylvania where people could vote by mail. I know that's something you've done in Colorado for a long time. And man, our postal workers were getting beat up by Louis DeJoy, making it harder for them to just do their jobs and deliver ballots on time. So we actually had to sue the postal service in order to just let those great postal workers do their job. We actually sued them twice here in Colorado because they started delivering this information about ballots that was wrong. And so we had to right. get relief on that too. Um, it was a- I'll show you one. One yeah. other thing, Phil, I took him down, but he was up there for a while too. This is the count because we wanted to make sure every single vote was counted in Pennsylvania. Cause after all, we had a former president who sued us 39 times to make it harder for people to vote and harder for the votes to count. So I had the count up on my shoulder for a while too. How many of those lawsuits were filed by Rudy Giuliani? Oh, I don't know the exact number. He was involved in a few of them and, um, He's not done with Pennsylvania. We're going to hold some of these lawyers accountable uh, who went to court and lied and tried to undermine our democracy. So justice sets up a theme that's worth talking about, which is in politics and the rule of law, things tend to be in the factual world. Right. In the political world, people can say whatever they want. And as long as they can win enough votes, they can keep saying whatever they want. As you think about the coll collision of those two worlds, how do you give people perspective on what the rule of law means and why it matters not to have politics just take over everything? Yeah, you just gotta tell people the truth. Um, and look, uh, part of my truth is that I'm a proud Democrat uh, and that I'm someone who supported Joe Biden over Donald Trump. But the first responsibility I had here in Pennsylvania and you had in Colorado was making sure that every single vote was counted. Every single legal vote was counted, no matter who they voted for. And so I just tried to be calm, tell the truth, make sure people understood the facts, make sure people understood their rights. And as much as we could depoliticize our work, again, not hiding who I am and what I'm about, but just depoliticizing our work and letting every person in Pennsylvania know that they could count on us. As I know, every, every Colorado knows that they can count on you. I mean, you're one of the one of the rare AGs that brings um, smarts, political savvy, and an ability to, to get shit done, if I could say that. Um, it is this true. Is, this you is really... recorded, Josh. So I think that's, that is an acceptable expression. Um, All right. I, I appreciate that very much. You know, I remember talking with you. We had a case that was going to the Supreme Court last year about the Electoral College. And right. the question was, could you have these rogue electors, faithless electors, doing whatever they wanted, or they have to follow what their state said? And you basically said to me, Phil, you should argue this. This is yep. your bailiwick. And I followed your counsel on it. And thank God we won that because that was one less thing we had to worry about this past fall. Man, thank God we won that. And I'm so glad we had that conversation. I was picking my kid up at a soccer practice. There was a lot of noise in the background, I remember. And we had that conversation. And to be honest with you, I was a little bit anxious about that case, just given what we expected Donald Trump to do to try and undermine the election, but I was calmed knowing that you were gonna personally handle that case. Uh, and it was not only important to Colorado, it was important for all of us. And thank God you did that. And by the way, we could have a, a much longer Zoom about the Electoral College. I think it's probably time we abolish that and just get to a straight popular vote, but that's for another conversation. Thankfully, uh, you did what you needed to do in court and it helped all of us across the country. So uh, a couple more things on that. I don't know if you realize this. That was the last case that Justice Ginsburg heard argued. Mm. And I was the last person to speak before. So that was very meaningful. Um, I'm sorry I never got to hear her talk about that argument, but yeah. it, was, uh, it was powerful to be there. 
So I want to underscore something that a lot of people here in Colorado may not realize. It's something that I think is part of what makes you so special. You won Pennsylvania by 4%, right? Yeah, about that, about 350,000 votes, yeah. Joe Biden won by 1%? Yeah, about 80,000 votes. So that means there are 270,000 people yeah. that didn't vote for a Democrat for president, but voted for you. That's right. For those of us in politics who want to win, and as you put it, get shit done, in order to get shit done, you got to win. Yeah. That obviously is an instructive case study. Mm -hmm. How did you build faith as a proud Democrat, as someone who's committed to advancing an agenda about yeah. helping people that didn't get sort of swallowed up by all the noise? Yeah. Because these days we don't see as many swing voters as we used to. What, what's your secret? You got to show up, man. Um, you know, not just in Denver, but also Los Animas. I bet you're surprised. I know where Los Animas, Colorado is. But for me, um, it was about showing up, showing up in the rural parts of our state and the southwestern parts of our state where Democrats just kind of stopped paying attention. Um, and we went there and we listened. And I recognized that showing up as a guy who is going to you know, fight like hell to protect a woman's right to choose or our LGBTQ brothers and sisters or joining you in fighting for dreamers. That's not exactly something that voters in those communities necessarily agree with us on. But here's what they realize. They realize that for too long, they've been getting screwed by government and screwed by big corporations and not getting the help that they need. And so I stepped up to protect their health care and I stepped up to get them their money back when they got fleeced. And I stepped up to, you know, make sure that they were getting basically the benefit of the bargain. Right. And so I think that voters in those communities respect you when you show up, respect your hard work and tend not to be as ideological as maybe the folks in D.C. want to suggest they are. What they really want is government to work for them. And so I really pride myself on making sure government works for people, no matter what they're ideological views are. Well, you said to me when I was starting campaigning, it was advice that Ken Salzer gave me too, was I need to visit every county in Colorado. I'd actually been to Los Angeles County before. Those of us uh, yeah. who love Trinidad know it is a special place. But there are a lot of counties I hadn't been to. We just saw here that Andy is showing up in So Watch to play. Um, and that is, uh, again, you have to actually be in Colorado. If you'll see it written, Josh, you wouldn't yeah. necessarily know how it's pronounced. So I, I did. And every place I show up, I would learn something. Yeah. And I'm much more committed to addressing issues like housing issues in Los Angeles County because I've been there to show up and to listen and to build a relationship. I take it that's part of your thinking on what made a difference. Big time. You know, in, in southwestern Pennsylvania, I'll just give you a real quick example, which is for those of you not familiar with the geography of our state, Philly's in the east, in the southwest is where Pittsburgh is. But in the vast land around the city of Pittsburgh, um, there were uh, a lot of people frustrated over the course of about 10 years because the two biggest health insurance companies were fighting with each other. And it got to the point where they were days away from cutting ties with one another and basically saying, okay, Phil, if you've got a healthcare card from the other company, you can't come visit our doctors anymore in the other company. People were really worried, right? Parents worried about not being able to take their kids to their doctors and people worried about, you know, not getting their next cancer treatment. And because I showed up in the community over and over again, when I would stop to get gas, people would talk to me about it. When I would stop to get a quick cup of coffee or a bite to eat at the diner, people would come over and they would talk to me about it. I knew it was on their mind. I knew it was critical. And we ultimately were able to work out a deal to protect the healthcare for 1.9 million Western Pennsylvanians. But it was showing up and getting a feel for the issue that allowed us to ultimately get a deal done and, and protect their healthcare. There's no substitute for showing up. And you, know, you, you, you learn a lot, as you said, you earn people's respect and then you get stuff done for them. Speaking of getting something done, what you did with the Catholic Church was a remarkable accomplishment. This was happening as I was running for office. And what happened is you got this report because you have these special grand jury laws that basically opened up the curtain and said, here's what's been going on. And you told the story in your report about someone in Pittsburgh, a known abuser, sexually abusing minors. What did they do? They sent him to Colorado. So it was no longer a problem in Pittsburgh. And so that opened the door, starting with my predecessor and then me, 
to ask our archdiocese, oh. well, what secrets do we have here? And survivors wanted those who abused them to be called out because some of them had lived with their abusers being celebrated while right. they lived in silence. And that report opened up for us doing something similar. We don't have the same law you had, but it was a tra truth and reconciliation effort, yeah. compensation effort, all because of what you did. Can you talk for that for about a minute or two? Yeah. First off, thank you for your leadership on that. I mean, just very briefly, we, we took on a massive grand jury investigation uh, into started as allegations, then they were proven. Um, the abuse of literally thousands of children in Pennsylvania at the hands of at least 301 predator priests in a conspiracy and cover up that went from diocese all across Pennsylvania, all the way to the Vatican. And we connected those dots and we proved our case. Several predator priests are now behind bars. Um, others were outside the statute of limitations, so we couldn't charge them, but at least the truth finally came out and survivors got a piece of their life back and they were heard. Um, other states like yours convened similar investigations. The Pope convened a global summit to address uh, this type of, of sexual abuse. There's so much more work that needs to be done. But for the rest of my life, I'm changed because of the strength of these survivors. The fact that some of them, a guy named Bob Corby from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, he went 65 years, an entire marriage, the birth of several of his own children who he could never hug with his own arms. He went all those years keeping the truth inside until our grand jury came along and he was able to share his truth. Just one example of, of many. And I continue to fight for these survivors, continue to do everything I can to expose um, institutional sexual assault, no matter where we find it. Uh, and I think we're better off in Pennsylvania because the truth is now known. Let me touch on one more topic also about predators, those who pushed opioids. Companies mm. like Purdue Pharma owned by the Sackler family made billions and billions of dollars knowing what they were doing was harmful. And with a crisis in this country, like no other nation on this planet, 2020, we saw more deaths from drug overdose, mostly opioids, yep. than any other year. Uh, you probably know people personally, as do I, whose lives have been deeply harmed, devastated by losses of kids, brothers. Uh, talk a little about what inspires you on that work. Um, the mom that hugged me in Beaver County and, and wanted me to hold a picture of her son and told me his whole life story. Um, and, and there are dozens and dozens of examples um, of that. Uh, for me, it's fighting for those people who have lost their lives, oftentimes through no fault of their own. They got addicted to a pill that people like the Sacklers went around lying, saying wasn't addictive. Um, people, you know, four out of every five heroin users who are buying heroin on the streets of Philadelphia or wherever, um, started with one of those pills. That's what got them addicted in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, we make arrests of drug dealers all the time. But, you know, as we go and make those arrests, we know that we need to cut off the supply chain. Well, the supply chain isn't just on street corners. The supply chain starts in the boardrooms of pharmaceutical companies. That's where this crisis was uh, manufactured. And so for me to be able to partner with you in holding these pharmaceutical companies accountable, making sure that um, they're going to pay for treatment for Coloradans and Pennsylvanians, that's incredibly important. And so I know uh, you and I are probably along, you know, we're, we're coming down to maybe the five yard line here. We got, we got some more work to do, but I think we're close to being able to deliver some real money uh, and real resources for treatment for our communities to make up for the crisis that they manufactured in their boardrooms. Last question for you. We're living in a time of real distrust in our institutions, in political leaders. When people say to you, Josh, how do I know I can trust you? Or what gives you your true north so you're not gonna end up getting um, down the wrong road? How do you respond? Look, trust is earned. Um, I've been people, the people's attorney general here in Pennsylvania now for four and a half years. I level with people, whether it's good news or bad news, and you just try and earn that trust over time. Um, you just, you know, chip away every day at the cynicism that, that exists in our system. I mean, don't get me wrong, Phil, the, 
you know, we, we won all of our lawsuits. You won your lawsuits to defend the, the voters in, in your state and, and in mine. But make no mistake, the toxicity of Trump lives on. The 70 percent of Republicans think Joe Biden wasn't legitimately elected. About 65 percent believe that voter fraud uh, was the number one issue in the 2020 election here in Pennsylvania, which, you know, there just wasn't that type of widespread voter fraud they're talking about. And so I think the way we combat that is by telling the truth. The way we combat that is by appearing publicly and speaking truth, by having government documents like the inspector general's report that came out the other day um, that debunked a big myth about votes being stolen here in Pennsylvania. I just think we have to keep chipping away with truth. And, you know, look, guys like you are trusted in your state and you have a responsibility to not just bring great cases and prosecute people, but by speaking the truth. And hopefully um, in, in our system, we will get back to a common set of facts, even if we have political disagreements, that's healthy. But get back to a common set of facts. And the way we do that is guys like you and me speaking truth. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what I hope, uh, thanks to the generosity of so many people here tonight, um, you're going to be able to keep doing for at least four more years. Some of them are joining too, by the way. They're so inspired by you, Josh. Uh, rightly so. Final question. This is NCAA March Madness. You come from a great basketball town. Who do you root for? Are you a Nova fan? Yeah, I'll be rooting for Nova. Their game, I think, is at 8 o'clock tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, you always root for the Pennsylvania teams. This is a weird March Madness, too. Some of the big squads are not in it. You know, COVID is kind of wreaking havoc, wreaked havoc on the season. Hopefully, uh, the, the bubble will work. Um, I'm just a big hoops fan. I'm more of a professional uh, hoops fan, a big, big Sixers fan, but I watch every bit of hoops I can. All right, so let's talk for final minute on that, which is, did you catch CUB Georgetown yesterday? Handled. I did not. I did not. I saw you tweeting about it, though. Yeah, of course, because uh, Patrick Ewing, you know, is a big deal. He was getting all this props for winning the Big East tournament. CU wins. We're moving on. I've got yep. CU in my bracket going to the Final Four. Call me biased, but whatever. Well, as a, as a Hoya lawyer, um, I had Georgetown going pretty far. So my bracket is more than busted at this point. But I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. All right. Well, listen, maybe we'll get uh, the 76ers against the Denver Nuggets in the NBA championship. We can make a bet on that. Let me just tell you something, man. They are good. Denver's really, really good. Um, but I, uh, I like our chances. I really do. All right. Go enjoy the game. Thanks for joining me, Josh. Appreciate you. Hey, good to see you. Hey, folks. Thank you for uh, supporting Phil. We need him in our ranks. He's doing, I know, important work in Colorado, but he's really leading the way across the nation, inspiring a lot of us. So whatever you donated tonight, um, add a little bit more to it if you're legally permitted and make sure we get this guy back, okay? Thanks, everybody. See you soon. My name is Emily Suyat, and I'm here to talk to you about gun safety. In 2018, I went to a house party to meet the Democratic candidate for Attorney General, Phil Weiser. You know the kind of event I'm talking about. It's really small, informal, good snacks. I should have been relaxed, but I was psyching myself up to ask a question about gun safety. And I was really nervous because even though a majority of Americans wanted stronger gun laws, if someone asked a candidate to take a stand, you'd feel the whole room tense up. It felt really risky. Another candidate had told me privately, I support you, but I'm not going to do it publicly. My opponent will use it against me. Many of us also remembered 2013, where legislators were recalled and lost their jobs specifically because of their gun safety votes. So many of us still believe the myth that the gun lobby was all powerful. But let me tell you about Phil Weiser at this house party. Before anyone could ask him about guns, he brought it up himself. He spoke directly about gun violence prevention and publicly intentionally made it part of his platform. He treated gun violence like the public health crisis it is. Phil Weiser and candidates like Jason Crow and Tom Sullivan were all on the front line of a huge change. Candidates who ran on gun safety instead of running from it. They know it's a winning issue. Right now in Colorado, we have a majority of lawmakers who are making gun violence prevention a priority. Research shows that stronger gun laws mean fewer deaths. 
Our ERPO law didn't pass the state legislature until 2018, and so voters elected new leaders and it passed in 2019. Our attorney general played a big role in this, advocating for the bill and leading awareness efforts in the community. Just three years after that house party, in 2021, we have four bills, including a secure storage bill, that all have a strong chance of making their way to the governor's desk. These laws will save lives. The recall efforts don't even get off the ground. There's more work to do, especially at the federal level. But the gun lobby is getting weaker, and the gun safety movement is only getting stronger. Make sure it sound right, boys. Hello, everyone. This is Ismay. 
I'm a guardian on the Defenders of Democracy team, using my strength and integrity as a superpower. We'd love to have you be a Defender of Democracy too. We're defending the strength and integrity of the law by helping to re-elect Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser. Phil is working as a guardian for all Coloradans and for the environment, our elections, economic fairness, criminal justice, consumer protections, and equal rights for all. But he needs your help to remain in office. So I'm asking you to use your smartphone camera to scan this QR code and tap the link that comes up so you can contribute whatever you can to his re-election campaign. Or take a picture of the screen so you'll have the web address to type in to your browser later on. So come on everyone, join the Defenders of Democracy. We want all of you to be on our team. It sound right, boy. You know, there's been so much negative energy in the air here recently. I think it's really important to, to just remember how incredibly lucky we are and that, you know, this democracy and, and basic human rights are worth fighting for. Uh, I'm honored to be here. It's, it's awesome that all of you guys are here. This song is called Isn't That Enough? I got a pretty good woman by my side. I got a good, pretty woman by my side And she'll be by my side Till our, our time is up well, Tell me, isn't that enough? I got the pages of a story in my head I got the breeze from a lazy ceiling fan And I got good strong coffee filling up my cup Tell me isn't that enough? Ain't it enough to be happy? Enough to be free? Have everything that a, a human should need A little blood on my knuckles A little dust on my knees And an afternoon spent looking up At the blue sky through the leaves of a walnut tree I don't have my dobro player here today, so uh, Here's a mouth trumpet solo. You're allowed to laugh. Here we go. I got my word and the promises I keep. I got this highway and a guitar on my wing. I got my mother's voice and my father's love but tell me isn't that enough I got a pretty good woman by my side I got a good pretty woman by my side and she'll be by my side till our, our time is up tell me isn't that enough tell me isn't that enough tell me Hello again, everyone. Andy, you can play mouth trumpet anytime at one of our events, and we hope to have you back. 
I, I just, hope to be back. <laughs> yeah, I'm just stepping in here to give you all some quick updates. First of all, remember we have a Q&A session with Attorney General Weiser coming up in just a little bit. So please type any questions you might have for him in the Q&A window. Our team members will be monitoring your questions and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can. I also want to remind you real quickly that when you see one of our animated Defender of Democracy superheroes on the screen, that's the time to have your smartphone handy so you can donate using your phone's camera. Just scan the QR code with the camera like you're going to take a picture of it and then a link will pop up and you can tap the link to be magically transported to the page where you can donate to be a defender of democracy too. If you feel like you don't have time to do it while you're watching the event, just snap a photo of the screen while the slide is on and then you'll have the website URL address so you can type it into your browser and donate later. If you're enjoying this event, we know you're going to want to know what our team is doing next. We've been asked to produce the Colorado Democratic Party's fourth annual Obama Gala Livecast on April 24th, which features a star-powered lineup of national name politicals, including Representative Adam Schiff, Senators Alex Padilla, John Ossoff, Cory Booker, Maggie Hassan, and New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, plus our smoking hot seven piece house band for the event, Chris Daniels and the Kings, will have poetry, dance, and so much more. Our team members will put the web address in the chat now so you can copy and paste it and get your tickets. You know, if the Rocks Productions team is producing it, you can count on a really great time, right? Now, just one more thing, and this is something near and dear to my heart. If you are enjoying the original live music of our house musician tonight, Andy Hackbarth, wait until you see what else Andy is up to. In just a little bit, we're going to show you a very short video of a project he's undertaken restoring and renovating the historic Sawatch Hotel in Sawatch, Colorado. This project is so exciting and interesting that our team is happy to support it. And we look forward to the day when we can host one of our events from the Sawatch Hotel, which is going to be an art center in a place that really needs a boost. So stick around and take a look at what's going on there and join us in supporting this project that will produce some hope and change for a left behind area of Southern Colorado that needs the kind of loving Andy is working hard to give it. Maybe you want to give a little too. So enough of the updates. Let's get this party started again. I hope you're enjoying the incredible music of Colorado's own Andy Hackbarth. And here's another film from the Rocks production players. This song celebrates 25 years since being written for the hit Broadway musical Rent. 25 years! Rent tells the story of a group of impoverished young artists and musicians struggling to survive in New York's Lower East Side. It resonates with anyone who's struggling with life. This particular group of friends grapples with addiction, eviction, sexual identity, aging parents, materialism, and the yearning to leave a meaningful legacy. At the time, the AIDS HIV epidemic was raging. So here we are 25 years later in the midst of a global pandemic, still dealing with equality and equity regarding the LGBTQ community, housing, education, women's health care, and equal pay for equal work voting rights and protections so that every citizen's voice is heard, criminal justice policy, illegal discrimination, or the possibility of targeted hate crimes, which put all of us at risk. The list goes on and on. Our Attorney General Phil Weiser's job is to advance the principles of justice, freedom, equality, and fairness for all. It's a core part of his life's work to translate that vision into reality. We need dedicated leaders like Phil Weiser, who are committed to equality and equity for all Coloradans. How are we doing? We've just spent 13,140,000 minutes since this story, Rent, was written. We need Phil Weiser to carry us forward. 
now it's time for us to get some answers to your questions from Attorney General Weiser. We have a lot of uh, questions, three layers. I hope so. They've been gathering questions from the Q&A window and would like to ask you some of them. Are you ready, Phil? I'm ready. I just have to start by thanking all the people, starting with you, Sandy, who put in so much time, creativity, and spirit to developing such a meaningful tapestry of conversations, of art, of civic engagement. It is truly inspiring. This is what politics should be like. Thank you. We have a lot of fun and our motto is we produce hope and change. So we're hoping that that's what we're doing with these events, but you have been on nearly every one of our events, Phil. So we owe it to you to show you some love and cause you have helped us with so many other candidates and causes. Thank you. So first up, um, you know this guy, he's the vice chair of the Colorado Democratic Party and the voice of our animated superhero defender of democracy, RJ, which is for racial justice, his superpower. It's our own team member, Howard Cho. Howard, would you like to ask General Weiser a question from the hey, audience? Before he does that, how awesome was Howard at the Democratic National Convention with his family at Red Rocks? <laughs> that was special. Thanks, Phil. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Phil. I, um, I have a question from Deborah McKillop and actually from many others uh, because I know how engaged you've been. Um, but we wanted to ask about, you know, with the recent shooting in Georgia, uh, about the increased incidents against Asian Americans and, you know, with the crime and the hate violence, what can Colorado's AG office do to help protect our Asian communities and all communities against this type of hate? The rising hate, and there's a lot of different indicators that we've seen, including the ADL collected propaganda by white supremacy online, it almost doubled from 2019 to 2020. So we know it's around us. We started working with the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, something like a year and a half ago, before the pandemic, to encourage and enable better reporting of hate crimes. And let's talk for a minute about hate crimes against Asian Americans because they are often underreported. And we've got to work on both sides and we're going to commit to this work. Howard, I was privileged to join you and other leaders on Thursday night. And there's two sides to this. One is supporting the Asian American community and the Asian American Pacific Island community to have trust in law enforcement and to be able to speak up. Because right now people can look at the statistics and say, oh look, there are not a lot of hate crimes against Asian Americans, and that's wrong because a lot of times they're not being reported. The second thing we've got to work on is how we train law enforcement to be able to identify, investigate, as well as the importance of when you hear from someone who's a victim of a hate crime, how you support them and enable them to feel included as part of this American story. So we're working on that. We've developed our first training and we're going to keep at it. And I also think all of us can be our best authentic selves, supporting one another. Uh, Martin Luther King has a wonderful quote on this, which is, darkness can't crowd out darkness, only light can do that. And hate can't overcome hate, only love can do that. What a moving answer. Thank you so much. Um, next, we have another guy you know, Phil. He is a veteran, a father of three amazing kids, and a caring member of his community who is continuing his candidacy to unseat Ken Buck in Colorado's fourth congressional district, Douglas County's own Ike McCorkle. Ike, come on in and let's see what question rose to the top of your list from the audience. Yeah, well, first I just wanna say thank you so much um, for having me back again, uh, Sandy, Rocks Resistance. Um, you guys are an amazing team. This is the best production I've seen. And uh, Phil, uh, Attorney General Weiser, um, uh, it's a real honor uh, to be here uh, in support of you again. I had the honor to campaign for you back in 18, and so I'm certainly uh, going to do so again. And we got uh, so many great questions just flowing in here. There's no way we could possibly uh, answer them all about protecting voting rights, about uh, vaccinating prisoners against COVID, about bringing back the fairness doctrine, about uh, homelessness sweeps in Denver. And so we have a whole lot of really engaged, concerned citizens on tonight. And so I just want to thank everybody for being here. <laughs> 
And uh, I'll get on to the question I need to ask, uh, which is one from one of my constituents. And I'm happy to be able to ask it because it's actually the practice question I wrote because I got asked about it uh, by a few of my constituents uh, throughout the 2020 uh, cycle. So uh, Jillian Hickson from out in Lamar, uh, Colorado, uh, writes, uh, hi, Attorney General Weiser, uh, I don't know if you'll remember me, uh, but we had coffee in Lamar three years ago, where you graciously listened to my family's story about the horrible debacle of conservation easements and the injustice caused by the Colorado Department of Revenue and the wrongful clawback of tax credits that caused bankruptcies for hundreds of farmers and ranchers uh, throughout Colorado. As you may be aware, uh, legislative bill SB 21033 has been introduced to finally help repair the damages uh, to farmers and ranchers uh, caused by the CDOR. Um, may we count on you for your full support of SB uh, 21 Tech 033 uh, to correct the uh, decades of atrocities um, that were inflicted uh, on these uh, families and farmers and ranchers in, in their communities. Well, I remember that coffee fondly, Jillian. Uh, that, that's part of what I was talking about with Josh Shapiro is when you're committed to going all across the state, you learn a lot. And I hadn't heard about conservation easements before you gave me an education. Um, I've been trained by my legislative uh, director not to comment on bills that I haven't yet looked at yet, just because I'm not sure all the details, but I, I do recommend, I, I do uh, remember fondly that visit and I um, wanna make sure we're treating people fairly. So please do feel free to uh, follow up uh, and I will uh, for sure be in touch um, with my ledge person to get a sense of what's happening on that. And I, um, I know that a lot of people in uh, community where you live were affected by it and, and we need to make sure that we're treating everybody fairly. So I'll, I'll take a look at it for sure. Thanks for raising it. And thanks for joining me for coffee. A lot of times when I was a candidate, I'd show up in different communities and it might be like one or two people were there. And so I just visited with them and I'll keep coming back and look forward to seeing you in the future. I love that about you, Phil. I feel like anyone could sit out and have coffee with you. And listen, I want to say we are so proud to host people from all the way out in Lamar, Colorado, which is practically in Kansas and Oklahoma and might as well be in Texas. It's so red. So um, thank you for coming to our event. Thank you for asking a question. And if you have time, would you take another question? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Um, just tell me when you're getting tired or, you know, ping me on the backside, whatever. Anyway, finally, our own team relay lead, lead our storyteller, our question asker, our video maker, and all around great member of our team, Karen Jefferson, has a question for you. General Weiser, this question comes from Michelle Mead. Uh, Michelle points out that you speak with such empathy and emotional intelligence, and that as allies, how can folks address questions like dark money, uh, criminal justice reform, with that same empathy um, when we're kind of tired of it? Michelle, you are such an extraordinary engaged citizen. We, we are such a better state for your leadership. And part of what you represent, for those who don't follow Michelle on Twitter, I, I would recommend it. You're, you're working on improving yourself. So you're the answer to this question. All we can do is work on being our best authentic selves. And part of it, empathy is humility. You know, there's that great expression, until you've walked a mile in someone's shoes, you don't necessarily know what they're going through, which is why listening matters so much. I mean, I've learned a lot about opioid epidemic or victims of childhood sexual abuse, things that I haven't experienced personally, but friends and allies have. And by listening and understanding, you can take on a real commitment. You can take on under, you know, perspectives. Um, sometimes these issues are hard because you're dealing with different people who are experiencing different sides of it. And so you need to be open to all the sides of a problem. And a lot of these problems require that empathy. I'll give you an example. I am proud of the extreme risk protection order law we have. And I went to, you know, very red counties 
and I heard concerns about it. And I showed up and I listened to them and I tried to see if there's anything in their concerns that I could work on implementing this policy so that it didn't have the effects they were afraid of. Uh, and that's all we can do is try to listen with an open mind, open heart and be our best authentic selves. And, and you do that, Michelle. Yeah, that was a great answer too. Listen, if you're willing, I'd like to do another round of questions. Yeah, go for How it. do you feel about it? I mean, yeah. we never get a chance just to talk to you. We always have you on and, you know, give you a few minutes and this is your show. So could we go again? <laughs> go again. Howard, have you got a question? Hey, Phil, um, <clears throat> we sure do. Um, we have another question and uh, from David Hagen. He says, what is your stance on the classes core process? For many folks in Colorado paying hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars to be granted public information, it isn't equitable. If you're committed to equality, um, he's asking if we should stop charging the citizens. So I can talk about how our office does this. And I did this when I was the dean at the city law school too, which is to be as transparent as we can be and not to make people jump through hoops. Every single governmental body has to operate this for themselves. The reason that there's charging in theory is if it costs money to create whatever is being done, um, it can then be passed on. I am interested in hearing from people when they've experienced abuses to a process like this. And so if you believe you have been subject to abuses and the process isn't working as it should, um, please do feel free to follow up in our office. You can go to uh, coag.gov and uh, reach out to our office with concerns, feedback. Happy to hear more of it. Um, I can't give you a lot of detail because depending on what government entity you're talking about, you could be experiencing a different sort of situation. Douglas County, for example, they've got their own CORA approach. Um, I can only speak for how my office does it. And obviously, if the legislature takes this issue up, it could become uh, a policy issue that Colorado could decide Hey, let's do it differently. How about you, Ike? Have you got another question for the Attorney General? I sure do, Sandy. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I do have another great question here um, from <coughs> Jillian Hickson and another from uh, John Clark. Um, but uh, he says, <coughs> when can we hold media giants or how can we hold media giants accountable uh, to provide uh, leadership to filter out uh, hate language? And um, one of the other questions uh, we had received was, um, is there a way to ensure that there's truth uh, in media and political speech doctrine? I don't know if that's um, a possibility, but that was one of the questions and then uh, Jillian asked how she can get in touch with your office and I'll get her in touch with your office. Yeah, but, uh, and, yeah. I'll just answer that. This is good for everyone to know. Um, COAG.gov gives you the basic portal to our office. Also, if you're looking about consumer fraud, you can go to stopfraudcolorado.gov and you can report it there. So Jillian um, and uh, John, this is a, a painful, important topic. Unfortunately, we're going to need national legislation to oversee these tech platforms and how they manage what information people see or don't see. If something gets taken off a platform and it's something which is fair and true, it should be staying on. I don't know if Congress is going to be able and up to dealing with that. I would sure hope so. Also, because we've seen these entities like Google and Facebook become dominant in their realm, um, I, along with other state AGs, have filed antitrust suits, which are geared to go after uh, this dominance and uh, predatory actions by these companies, Facebook and Google, and to restore competition to the marketplace. If we have more competition, we're less basically dependent on a few providers. Yeah, this is getting to be a big issue, and I'm, I'm so glad that you're looking at it, and thank you for offering the resources that people can engage with your office through. Um, that's very important. You've been the people's attorney to, since you took office and we wanna keep you there, Phil. We're, we're committed. So Karen, do you have another question from the audience? I do. This question comes from Trish in Denver. And the question is, are states' rights going to interfere or undermine the national attempts at uh, 
improving voting rights? No. It's very clear under the 15th Amendment that Congress has the power to protect voting rights. And I will continue to fight for voting rights. There's a case now on the Voting Rights Act at the Supreme Court that we're involved in to protect Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. As we were talking about with Josh Peer and I, this is one of the most fundamental issues we face. Can people vote safely, securely, without facing discrimination or a disparate impact? Just take, for example, in Georgia last year, during the primary election, there was not the accessible voting there was in the general election. The average wait time to vote communities of color was 55 minutes. In white communities, it's six minutes. That is an affront to fair voting rights. Wow, I, I mean, that's, that just lays it out in numbers. Um, you know, we're running so long, I wish we could talk all night, but we have something uh, coming up that will help people show support for Attorney General Phil Weiser right now. And we wanna say thank you for letting us ask you questions. Everyone stay tuned because here comes E. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hey there, Familia. This is E, your defender of democracy with the superpower equality. Our Colorado Attorney General, Phil Weiser, has been working hard to defend equality while in office and to preserve and protect our elections, our land, air, and water, and defending the rights of immigrants, criminal defendants, consumers, and more. So we hope that you can help keep him on the team by chipping in a few bucks to help reelect Phil so he can continue representing the people of Colorado, our freedoms, resources, and especially our equality. Listen to E now. Fill around those couch cushions and check your pockets for some change and give him some love, won't you? Just use your smartphone camera to scan this QR code and tap the link that comes up so you can chip in a few bucks. Or take a picture of the screen so you'll have the web address and type it in your browser later. So come on, everyone, and join the Defenders of Democracy. We want all of you on our team. It sound right, boy. Welcome to Storytime from Rocks Productions, Defenders of Democracy series. Today's story is Wiser Tales, true stories of a Colorado Attorney General. Once upon a time in a land very nearby, there was a place called Hunky Dory with mountains, streams, and a wide open plain where the sky was blue and the air was thin. People gaped in awe seeing its beauty for the first time. In 2018, the people of Hunky Dory made a wise choice. They elected the People's Knight. To protect their rights, they elected Sir Phil Weiser as Attorney General. Riding in to protect their environment, their civil rights, their voting rights, and their rights to live without systemic racism. Sir Weiser is able to see what many people cannot. Sir Weiser is working to reform the criminal justice system so that all citizens of Hunky Dory may live their lives in peace, undisturbed by embedded bias that many refused to see until now. He sees cash bail as needlessly adding to criminality. He works to hold accountable officials who have abused their authority. Sir Weiser sees, understands, and communicates the parallels between water rights in the West and access to broadband spectrum. They are both finite, their usage has changed over time, and in the future, their use will become more critical and thus more valuable. Both must be protected and preserved. Sir Weiser protects the people of Hunky Dory. He protects their lands from pollution so they can hunt, fish, and hike in pristine landscapes. He protects their consumer rights, recovering more than $9 million when a bank done Hunky Dorians wrong. He defends the mail-in election in Hunky Dory as the most secure in the land he sees injustices you might not. He rights wrongs. Hunky Dorians would do well 
to see that Sir Phil Weiser is re-elected in 2022. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Hackbarth and welcome to the historic Sawatch Hotel here in Sawatch, Colorado, which if you don't know is about 45 minutes south of Salida. It's at the north end of the San Luis Valley. We have hot springs, ski areas, hiking, biking, fishing. It's a, a beautiful area. And I bought this hotel back in November of 2019 with the plan to just fix it up over the course of 10 or 15 years, sort of slowly. I was working on cruise ships as a guest entertainer, a musician. When the coronavirus hit, I got stuck in Dubai for a few months. So when I finally came back, there was no work. I said, let's just dig into this project full on. The exciting thing about this renovation is we're combining historic preservation with you know, sustainability and alternative energy practices. Everything from you know, passive and active solar to you know, super efficient biomass masonry heaters. We're using infrared ceiling panels hempcrete for insulation, all sorts of things like that. So it's really sort of combining the old and the new. And we have a, a huge focus on live music and art. This exterior lot here is gonna be a, a beer garden with a big stage, live music going on there. The bar and coffee shop inside are gonna be uh, very live music focused. We'll have art gallery inside. I'm gonna be doing shows with the historic uh, youth theaters, bringing in speakers. So this is really gonna be a cultural hub. So not only is the hotel gonna be an amazing place to take in live music and art and relax, but it's gonna provide a, a huge economic boost to this area. This is one of the poorest counties in Colorado. They've really struggled uh, financially through the years. And this is gonna you know, bring money from outside, bring money from the front range, really give a boost to this area and the people here in the community. I've created a GoFundMe page, which has a video tour of the hotel, and a little bit more information about the area and just what we plan to do here. So you can scan your QR code on your screen or visit sawatchhotel.com to learn more. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. Isn't this a watch hotel renovation project an exciting one? Remember, you can support Andy's efforts by going to sawatchhotel.com and chipping in a few bucks. And we look forward to seeing all of you at the Colorado Democratic Party's Obama Gala Livecast on April 24th for incredible music, poetry, dance, and more political star power than you can shake a cocktail at. If you arrive late or know someone who couldn't make it this evening, you can see this event and all our events, plus all our videos on our YouTube channel at tinyurl.com forward slash rocks productions youtube channel we'll put that in the chat so you can copy it and paste it into your browser after the show our team will be back again in may too with another event in the defenders of democracy series designed to inform uplift motivate inspire and hopefully continue to do what we always strive to do produce hope and change and now here's a video we made about just that very thing